there are certain binomials and in some cases trinomials that require special factoring techniques. One of those special factoring techniques is using the difference of two squares. If you have a perfect square root and a binomial yet separated by a minus sign, then more than likely you could use the difference of two squares. So for the first example, you draw your two parentheses. x squared can be broken down as x times x. A difference of squares means you have a difference of signs, difference in signs. So we have a plus and a minus. And what goes in the last two spots, what is the square root of 121? Right, that is 11. So 11 goes in to each spot. And it's factored. Let's look at the next binomial. We have a binomial separated with a minus sign in the middle. And the last number here, you can take the square root of it. So let's break down and draw two parentheses. What goes in the last, I'm sorry, the first two spots, y squared, you can break that down as y and y. Difference of squares means you have different signs. So we have a plus and a minus. And what goes in the last two spots, the square root of 49 is 7. That's it. Look for a greatest common factor, possibly. You might have to take that out before using a special factoring technique. Let's look at the last example. We have a binomial. The number 100 is a perfect square root. We can take the square root of it. But in the middle, we have a plus sign. This cannot be factored, or you can put prime, meaning it cannot be factored, because we must have a negative or a minus sign in the middle to use the difference of squares. So the last example is prime or cannot be factored. Another special factoring technique involves cubes. Look in your book or online in my math lab for the various formulas you will need to factor a sum or a difference of two cubes. Now for number one, we have what's called the sum of two cubes. So the formula that we will be using is a cubed plus b cubed equal to a plus b times a squared minus a times b plus b squared. How do we find a and b? Well, a is just going to be x. To find b, take the cube root of 8. Right, the cube root of 8 is 2. We have a and b, so we can plug both terms into our formula. So right here we have x plus 2 times x squared minus well, a times b is just 2 times x, or x times 2, and you can swap it around, plus b squared, which is uh, 2 squared. 
and 2 squared is equal to 4. The good part about the cubes formulas is once you plug in your A and B or your, your given values, you do not have to factor anymore. This is our final answer. Let's look at one more example. This one involving a difference of cubes. Difference of cubes, we have a different formula. So the difference of cubes is a cubed minus b cubed equal to a minus b times a squared plus a times b plus b squared. We have our formula. All we need to find now is a and b. So to find a, take the cube root of 64. Right, that would be 4. 4c. Move over. To find b, you take the cube root of 125. Right, that would give you 5. Since we have a and b, we can plug those values into our formula. So we have 4x minus 5. And since we are squaring a few things, I'm going to use brackets initially. a is 4x. Be careful, put that whole 4x in parentheses because you're squaring not only the 4, but the x, plus 4x times 5, and plus 5 squared. We just need to simplify a few things in the second part. 4x quantity squared will give you 16x squared plus 20x plus 25. So what we have here in the last step is our final answer. For the cubes, remember each situation, whether it's sum or difference, has its own unique formula. So I go back in your ebook and online in my math lab and review those formulas.